president of the chamber, Jack Russell, and he's going to give us a little bit of information on our speaker today. Jack? Thanks, Rob. 2018 is a special year in the city of Westfield as we celebrate 10 years of becoming a city. Our esteemed guest today is the first and only mayor of Westfield. Mayor Andy Cook and his wife Barbara have been married for 44 years and are proud Westfield residents. Mayor Andy Cook has two sons, Ben and Brian Cook, and a daughter, Susan, who is a pharmacist and mother of three in Lafayette. He has nine grandchildren, but as he likes to point out, sometimes more, uh, sometimes more depending on uh, if his daughter is fostering a child at the time. Mayor Cook has a vision for our community and wants to make it a place where our children and children's children can thrive. He became interested and concerned about our city's future when he first moved to Westfield and believed if you want to make an impact on local government to get involved, and so he did. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Andy Cook as he delivers his annual State of the City address. Thank you very much, Jack. Appreciate the, uh, the introduction and your, you know, you're right about the first time mayor. Um, that was only good because nobody had anything to compare me to because <laughs> As a town during you was turning into a city, we had no idea how to do that. Back in the days, Joe Plankus, you were part of that original thing. No idea. And I had no idea how to be a mayor. I'm a truck driver, right? What do I know about running the city? So we started out on an even keel, learning all through this process. And we'd really like to look, kind of look back on the last 10 years and uh, see where we've been and see where we're coming from. And I see we're honored to have not one or two, but three county commissioners here. Lady and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Karen Glasser's here uh, from our Congresswoman Brooks office. Karen, thanks for being here. It's an honor to have you all here. So if you would join me, we're gonna take a look back over these last uh, fun 10 years. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about where we're going from there. Take a look at this, if you would. That's so well done. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Cameron Sparkle and his wife, who did uh, produce that, did the video. I also learned he's a Northwestern High School graduate. No wonder he's capable of such quality. Very well done. Thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, something I know Aaron's been working on for a long time to try to put together where in the world have we been for 10 years. So uh, I want to pick up on, uh, okay, I'm clicking. All right, wrong direction, sorry, Aaron. Pick up on the Grand Junction. All right, been talking about it a long time. Uh, as Mick said, planning for that began in his living room, I think, 10 years ago. But you've got to keep in mind, this is not your normal downtown park. Uh, many years in the planning, many years in the land acquisition, it is not easy to develop and buy this kind of land right in the middle of a downtown. And we're about ready to go. If Todd Bertrand can pull off his financial magic later this year, We've let the uh, contract for the next piece, which is reworking the waterway through there. Took five years to get permits. We got one more to go from the DNR, Jeremy. I expect that this week. If you don't, for whatever reason, you won't let me talk to those bureaucrats, and I don't understand it, but I'll be happy to do so. We expect to get that Raging Creek underway this year. Uh, Next year, I hope to begin to work on the amphitheater side on the west side of the creek and then the following year over on the east side of the creek. A lot's got to take place, but I see movement in that and we're going to get there. But meanwhile, you just look at what all is going on in this, this downtown area. And as you know, we want this to be something unique. Uh, it's going to take time. We want to use as many materials in the buildings we already have. Um, most all of our little shops are uh, 
occupied down there. We've got people like Sam Milligan and Jim Anderson building, restoring homes. Love to see that. Uh, and as we went over on here with the, uh, the Park Street and all the restaurants down there. And this is all beginning even before we begin the construction of the park. You're going to see some very, very exciting things happening in and around the downtown area because the private sector is very much recognizing what in the world is going on down there. We talk a lot about, of course, our grand baby Grand Park. I can tell you this, after uh, four or five years now in the public realm, Grand Park is indeed recognized as the family travel sports destination in the United States. And, I, and I, I say that with all sincerity. Wherever our people are traveling, they often equate, oh, Westfield, isn't that? Yeah, it is. I know my little one Brian was out in California playing golf a few months ago in a Major League Baseball tournament. Not that he had anything near baseball, but some guy heard uh, from the majors heard he was from uh, Indiana and he went up and he said, hey Brian, you're from Indiana, yeah. Have you ever heard of Grand Park? Brian said, yeah, I thought he had. <laughs> you know, just quickly, Financially, you know why we established Grand Park. It was to develop a commercial tax base. So I get asked a lot, hey, is Grand Park working? Is it really a, yeah. Grand Park is, has developed, is developing, or will soon develop, develop over $500 million of commercial tax base. The vast majority of it would probably not be here if it weren't for Grand Park. From an operational standpoint, you get asked that question an awful lot. Is it, you know, do you, gotta, do you have to put money in it? You know, I have not gone back to my council and asked for one dollar of residential dollars to operate Grand Park. It is self-funding itself. To the extent that our baseball private sector partner, the Bullpen Indiana Bulls, is investing nearly two million dollars in upgrades to their fields of their and escrow money that they made they're investing near that much money into improvements in the park so we have private money financing improvements in the park that the city owns it's kind of backwards isn't it the next step really for Grand Park is we really will be making a very concerted effort to develop further the business of sports. Um, that is, sports associated businesses. Sports marketing, sports medicine, sports equipment. We're thrilled to have Methodist Sports is uh, an occupant of the uh, event center. Uh, another private sector investor, a group of uh, former professionals putting their dream in the ground immediately adjacent to our event center will be a very high performance training facility in a multitude of sports including baseball, volleyball, golf, football. Again, the business of sports, the private sector investing as a result of Grand Park and paying property taxes. A highly exciting product out of Grand Park, if you haven't heard of it, have you ever heard of eSports? I had not. This is taking place in the, what's now the new Pacers uh, Center that uh, Andy Cart and his investors brought forth at the basketball arena. But in the corner there, there's this facility called the eSports Game On. And this is something that's going to be huge. Yeah, it's about kids and gaming, but it has gone on and beyond where now colleges are actually recruiting and giving away scholarships to students to participate competitively in sports via electronic. Professional teams are getting into the business. 
this is, and this guy out here at Grand Park has got some big ideas on how he's going to make that a big part of Grand Park. Again, private sector investment. For years, as you know, we've had the Indy 11 out here. They practice, it's their headquarters, they're joining a new league, we're thrilled to have them out there. The Pacers joining our ranks at Grand Park, and of course, the announcement we were able to make several months ago, the fact that the Indianapolis Colts will have their training camp for 10 years contract out at Grand Park. I mean, this is gonna be a phenomenal experience for Westfield. Especially this year, things have been a little down, you know. New coach, bad season. Hopefully we'll see Andrew Luck coming back. Uh, I know our staff has already begun to have meetings with the Colts on, uh, they, the Colts intend to make this a major marketing opportunity for them, which turns into a major marketing opportunity for us. We'll need a lot of volunteers. Joel's already getting nervous. Uh, but this city can pull it off. And I mean truly, as happens a lot, the eyes of the nation we're going to be on Westfield for that two-week period. We're going to need a lot of help from a lot of interested people to make this little city shine far above its weight class, as Todd often reminds me. Next amenity that we offer is our trail system. And, uh, you know, it's really beginning to, to grow. Um, over the last several years, if you watch the progression, the different pieces which we've been able to put, fill in. Uh, I was just meeting with our uh, engineering staff this morning. They've got a plan for the next 10 years on how to fill in the little gaps all over that, that need to be filled in. But we have one of the most comprehensive trail systems right now of any place in Indiana. Of course, the other big news is, you saw it flash on there, we will have the 32 bridge beginning construction this year. We're also working on, I think this will be a lot of fun, uh, Public Works is working on a system of golf cart pathways, marked ways to get from our different residential communities to our downtown and to Grand Park. But we intend to become very much a golf cart city. And while we're talking about trails, we have a very, very special guest with us. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Brunel, right here. Alan. <laughs> Alan is the godfather of the trail system in Westfield. You know the very first mile from 146 to 156 is called the Alan Brunel Trail. He's going to be with us because next year, at the end of this year, Alan, you're going to see your Monon dream go all the way from Indianapolis, of course, from our southern piece named after you, but by the end of this year, that trail will go all the way to Sheridan. going to be a big bridge. <laughs> it not only goes across 32, it also goes across Tournament Trail. So Phil Sundling has his, uh, his work cut out for him there. As you know, we've tried to keep up as best we can with traffic around here. You know I'm a road nut. I'm on our guy's case all the time, whether it's snow removals or whatever, to stay ahead of our traffic. I don't want to get bogged down. You know, we were fortunate to, uh, to get a boost in funding from the sale of the utility. That money is just now finally being uh, put to good use. They told me the other day we have 30 roundabouts in town. Is that, is, that, is that about right? Okay, so wait a minute. Carmel's boasting about 100. They're three times our size. I think you're doing, you, we're doing all right, huh? So the roads, you know, we've got several projects this year. Um, that have uh, taken place. You see some of the progression map here, but we've also uh, put in a lot of time. And speaking of roads, these, Jeremy threw this statistic at me the other day. You know, I despise trash and litter. 
We make a real hard effort. We work with our contractors. We pick up our thoroughfares, especially around Grand Park. Um, do a lot of pickups of trash. We do uh, 31, even though it's in dot. We pick up 31, I think like four times a year, because I can't stand it when our guests come here and it looks crappy. At 16, we pick, they picked up 600 bags of trash. And last year, I hate to say it, they picked up 800 bags of trash. I know it's not you, but knock it off. You see somebody doing it? <laughs> Joel, give me my bullet, you know? I, I, I'll take care of it. But anyway. <laughs> Westfield Boulevard Extension will be a great long-term key piece to us. Down under 31, connects over by Target. Uh, the Mill Street. Oh, this little, love this little picture up here. You know what that is? That's underneath the bridge. You know, that's, that's like right here, yeah, it's right here. You know, I've always wanted a raging stream in the city. And about twice a year, we get it. <laughs> there it is. So, I, we photograph it when it happens, but the key that happened here really is the downtown didn't flood. You guys have been here a lot longer than I. You remember how many times that downtown would flood, well, this project. Has, uh, has taken care of that. We realigned Ditch Road out at the Casey Road area with all that growth going on, lined it back up with Ditch Road, uh, crossing 32. I know people want to see a signal there, working with NDOT to do that, but we were able to eliminate that very dangerous Casey Road um, intersection out there. One of the hot topics we always talk about, the city, and our growth. And the city limits, <clears throat> you know, yes, over the years, we've, we've expanded, but it hasn't been, I think, sprawl. And when we asked the question a couple years ago, how big of a city do you want to be? I think the answer came back very clearly that, you know, we really don't need or want to be as big as many of our neighbors. We want to be able to, to have quality growth. We want to be able to keep that small town feel. I know that's a cliche. But we want to be able to keep quality growth. And, and let me tell you, that's a, that's a huge challenge. Um, one of the things that we see, and by the way, I thoroughly want to thank the men and women of our plan commission. I tell you, I would rather be mayor than serve <laughs> on the plan commission. These poor people are abused, they're accused of this and that, they get yelled at, they get screamed at, and yet week after week, and I mean that, they diligently dive through these projects that we get inundated with and arrive at solutions that we hope are a very good compromise between growing too much and growing too fast and yet keeping what we want Westfield to be. And all kinds of issues get drug into it. Dr. Great and their schools get brought in that, oh my gosh, we're, you know, schools are over capacity and with the, this, this and that. And, you know, to those people I say, hey, Check out their demographic study I think that's online. I think it, it's done a great job of pointing out that the schools know exactly where they're going with their facilities. They're making some major investments right now that are going to pay off immensely. Our kids aren't in trailers. I hope, may, hopefully we can avoid going there. But most of the cities of our size that have gone through growth, they we're kind of behind the eight ball when it came, comes to schools. And a lot of those kids were put in temporary facilities. Yeah, are things in some places at capacity? I think that's safe to say, but they're ahead of the game. And as we all know, to perpetuate the quality of the city, the quality of the schools are absolutely top priority. Not only does our plan commission have to look at all of these residential developments, and we're inundated with proposals. Why? Because people want to be here. We continue.
continues very necessarily, of course, that we look at continuing the commercial tax base. And it's not going to be just solely sports oriented. We need to diverse that, diversify that. We've got a couple of beautiful places for that to happen. The North Point up here at uh, uh, west side of, east side of 31, south of 38, we have our first uh, customer that's announced to come in there and the Toyota Bastion facility. Um, a perfect fit. It's going right on 31, just north of the Carrington Mortgage Building. They are involved in advanced logistics, and we are thrilled to have them make their groundbreaking in the next couple months. And uh, there are several other facilities and, and potential investors that we're looking at uh, that are looking at that property. Um, in a, another year, we will extend East Street north around behind the Carrington Mortgage Building and up through the middle of East Street as our second development that will add some really quality uh, commercial tax base, the Grand Millennium Center south of 32, east of 31. We'll, uh, we'll start construction hopefully this spring on the main spine road from 169 Street up to Poplar, which will become our northern extension of Westfield Boulevard. There we have planned hotels and offices, residential, all within walking distance of the downtown, the restaurant district, and all along the trails and, and the greenway. So we're really, really excited about looking at that development. You know, we often talk about safe city. And our two chiefs here know how I feel about prevention. And I gotta tell you, they're doing one heck of a wonderful job. You know, there's nothing sexy about prevention. There's no TV show about <laughs> prevention. There's all kinds of TV shows about your detectives that solve the crimes. But it's kind of like the other prevention we do with our youth assistance program. We prevent kids from entering the legal system. And by the way, speaking of that, do you know that in the seven years we've been operating the youth assistance program, over 800 families from this little city have been served by our youth assistance program? And I would tell you that we have prevented hundreds of kids from entering into the legal system. So when we look at crime and we look at fires, you know, we take it for granted what we've got here in Westfield. Um, our fire people under Chief Reed work so hard at prevention with new home construction and compliance, inspections of our commercial facilities. They hate it when I say we haven't had a major fire in a while. But I do know this, we've had some minor potential fires and the men and women of the fire have saved over $40 million worth of property that could have been ruined if it wasn't for their time and response. And that doesn't mention that 75% of their work is in medical runs. And this, the, the wait times, the transit times, constantly working on that. Cop-wise, Joel and his guys, they know how I feel about prevention. They know that we feel one of our largest ways to prevent crime is to keep a high profile. Fortunately, we've been able to add a couple of cops per year. Todd works real hard to come up with that money to continue to prevent crime as best we can. Traffic stops. Sorry guys, but that's a great way to keep a high profile. Red and blue lights. Tell the bad guys I'm going on north. But these guys have worked to the, to the point right now that both accidents and crime, despite our growth, accidents and crime growth have decreased 6% last year. 
And I'm really proud of that. Now you'll see about crime and because you'll see it on the next door and you'll see it on the on the website, but we don't we don't shove it under the rug. We put it right out there for everybody to see because the best deterrent we got is actually all of us. And it's like if you've heard it over and over. You see something that this is out of place. Hey, if you're hung up on I'm not gonna call 911, that's embarrassing. Get over it. Call. Cost nothing. Both of these guys are reaching the point of diminishing returns when it comes to the level of crime and public safety as a whole. Help us out. What do you think? Yes. We're coming up 31. <laughs> Steve Fleming, where are you? You designed that whole corridor. Can we do that? Okay. <laughs> we'll have this by this summer. We'll have some interchangeable patterns here that'll be backlit. We'll have this pole that could be different colors. But you'll definitely know that you've, uh, you're approaching Westfield. Hey, here's something I'm really excited about. Um, about a month or so ago, I got a phone call or a text, I guess, and, and uh, from a person at the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation, and this guy said, hey, would you be interested in uh, serving on a, a committee? And I'm like, well, yeah. And he said, okay, you know, send me your resume. And so I went, I hadn't done that in a long time. <laughs> Put that together and uh, a few weeks later this guy calls me and kind of gives me an interview. He said we're looking for about 20 or 25 people to serve on a national committee, advisory committee to Transportation Secretary Chow and we would like to invite you to be on that and I'm like well it's great what tell me a little bit about it. Well we know you have a presence with Tourism, yeah. I said, well, what, what are you looking for? Well, he said, we, I need a rural mayor. I said, well, I think I can help you out with the tourism part. And, he, and I said, but actually we're in the metro area of Indianapolis. I'm like, well, everybody knows where that is. In his very East Coast accent, accent he says, are you from around New York City? I said, no. He says, then you're rural. <laughs> so I was, I'm very excited. <clears throat> you know, I like transportation. Love, love the, uh, the tourism. And it, I think it's just, gosh, what a, what a tribute to the city of Westfield. And it's going to be little, tiny Westfield. I looked at some of those that are on the committee. We're a little tiny, let me tell you. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm thrilled to represent this city, and, and, and what a compliment to, uh, to, uh, to this whole entire observation. Hey, just quickly before we leave, I want to introduce you to somebody here today. Greg McCauley, right here, represents this. That's all I'm going to say right now. I will ask you this. Greg and his staff are looking for two, three, four thousand square feet of office space here in Westfield. Talk to him, would you please? <laughs> you know what we're what we're really trying to do here is like every other progressive city. We're trying to make a place. Um, even in the last 10, 20 years, the roles of a mayor, the roles of the city have just completely changed. Used to be the mayor would kiss the babies, pick up the trash, plug the holes, plow the snow, put water on fires, put the bad guys away. Hey, you were done. Today, 
We have to make a place of quality that will attract people. That's one thing that really worries me about the state of Indiana, is there aren't a whole lot of places that are creating places where our young people want to be. We're fortunately one of those recipients. And it's not easy. It takes growth, the opportunity for growth. Um, just the fact that people want to be here creates its own problems in itself. But just like we have so many young people moving in here, we also have, that I see as a huge compliment, a bunch of old people like me and Barb. Why are they moving here? Because they want to be close to their family. So we have a lot of different ages that are coming here, and not every city is, is able to do that. Um, so our work, whether it's trails or Grand Park or exciting things like some of the things you're seeing, the, the downtown, the ice skating, it's all about getting people to come here. You remember three or four years ago, all the politicians were clamoring, you know, we gotta have jobs, we need jobs, we need jobs. Well, now we got jobs, we just don't have folk to fill them. <laughs> and those places that have the folk, those places are the ones that will win the battle. By the way, did you just see it popped up on your phone an hour or two ago? Amazon let go its first round out of 20 cities across America. Indianapolis was one of those, but kind of scary, isn't it? But you know what I what most impresses me about that is you know a group of, of we mayors uh, several years ago began a uh, regional cities group with Indianapolis and the surrounding counties. Why? Because of economic development, because of common problems, um, a myriad of reasons. And a big reason was that's because what our competition does. And our competition is Columbus, Ohio, Charlotte, North Carolina, Denver, Colorado, Nashville. That's our kind of our competition when it comes to competing for, for jobs. In most of these other jurisdictions, they operate as a region. And they talk. And they don't you know, they don't jurisdiction over each other, but they plan. They market the region. Because nobody, big factory or office is going to look at Westfield off the bat. They're going to look at Indianapolis, right? Now, we happen to have some pretty good advantages over our competition, so to speak, but so be it. This Amazon submittal was the first time that this region had put a submittal together as a region. So to see that make round one, uh, I'm thrilled to death. It's fantastic. We got to touch on the, on the money slightly. Todd keeps a very tight book on our budgetary. I can tell you this. We operate in the black. We've got a tax rate that's not dissimilar from our other cities here in Hamilton County as a city rate. And we have money in the bank. Very proud of that. With that, I certainly don't want to leave out thanks to a group, many of which are sitting here at this table, and that's our city council. You know, I consider myself, yeah, please. I consider myself the most fortunate mayor in the state of Indiana. Um, I've had the support of our council and the backing for, for many, many years and all this wacky stuff we sometimes come up with. Not that they don't ask a lot of questions, believe me. But I use them for truly what they're called. They're called a council. And I can assure you, without exception, each one of these dedicated lady and gentlemen are serving for all the right reasons. 
And I don't always see that. They make lousy politicians. And they make great city councilors. They're there. They work unbelievable hours for a whopping, I don't know, $10,000 a year or something. I don't even know what it is. But these guys and lady, uh, they put in the hours. And we would not be where we are if it wasn't for the backing of the city council on our different projects. Thank you all guys very much. So, and my guy that keeps me straight and narrow, very, very difficult to do, Todd Bertrand. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> you, <laughs> I know it's hard. Aaron, Zach, Jacqueline put this whole thing together. I appreciate it very much. And, uh, you know, somebody said, I thought in, in one of the earlier things that, you know, Westfield was a cornfield. And yeah, you know, we're, we still grow some corn here today. But we're kind of growing other things too. We're growing families. We're growing kids. And uh, I don't think there's a darn thing wrong with that. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening. Good day.